Andrew McCart, IFL TV, and it's oh, proudly sponsored by Everlast. I've got to change that, change that up now. Um, delighted to be joined by Jerome Warburton. Jerome, I've got to say, uh, it's the first time I've met you. Um, so first of all, how's things? Oh, not too bad, thank you. Yeah, good. Definitely. Well, you're, you're there with Kieran Smith. Are you doing a little bit of training today? It's on Saturday. Uh, no, no, just come to sign a new deal with uh, Kieran. Talk to me about that then. Talk to me about signing with, with Kieran and uh, and stuff like that then. So I was with uh, Chris Saniger. Mm-hmm. Um, we signed a three-year deal, obviously, three years ago. And um, I had six fights with him. Um, one fight, My first fight was in York Hall. And then my other five fights was under the promotion of uh, Kieran. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, we had a little bit of a think about it and things like that. And I think... Um, you know, it, it seems like the right move to make. You know, it's closer. Obviously, uh, Chris was all the way down in Bristol. Um, you know, sometimes you make decisions and uh, it was the right decision at the time. So, obviously, move with Kieran. Um, you know, he has um, obviously ha- uh, got me my last five fights. So, you know, it seems the right thing to do. Definitely. And Kieran's obviously, what I've seen from from afar and watching what Kieran's been doing, he's been doing wonderful things for his fighters, getting them on shows and stuff like that. So definitely he knows what he's doing, he knows what he's talking about and he's got a passion for it as well, which is it's going to only stand you in good stead as well, having somebody like that in your corner. Yeah, yeah definitely. Uh, you know, being sat down now, I'm already talking about making moves already, do you know what I mean? So uh, everything's confident and positive and just can't wait to get the uh, show on the road. I've got to say before I want to I want to know about your background, your amateur background as well, and stuff like that, and your ambitions in boxing. But I want to go straight to your nickname, the Bread Maker. Yeah. I know I know your surname is Warburton, so I get the joke, man. But who came up with that? My um, boxing coach Wesley Jones. Yeah, yeah, the Bread Maker. Everyone always comments on it. Yeah, I'm the Bread Maker. Well, bread means yeah. money as well. That, that's yeah, hey, that's it. That's it. I'm the Bread Maker. Yeah. Good stuff. Man. That's it. Well, for people that don't know who uh, Jerome Warburton is. Break down your sort of your fighting style and your your amateur background and what you did in the amateurs and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, so basically, when I was about 13, 14, my mates were going to the gym. So, so they asked me if I wanted to go. I asked my nana because I was at my nan's at the time. She said, "Yeah, yeah, go on." And then um, they they didn't carry on going. I carried on going. And then back then in my gym, you used to have to earn your rights to get up to the amateur scene. Yeah. So I had to train hard. And then eventually, it took me about a year to then get into the amateurs and that was like a different scene you know you see the lads sat on the stairs waiting to go to the amateurs and you're like oh I want some of that I want some of that so I trained hard finally got in there I was about 15 16 when I had my first fight so it was quite late on yeah. and then eventually I had you know 60 fights in the amateurs I boxed out every other week at first I didn't really take it too serious but then um, I had like a, quite a bad defeat. I got knocked down in like a second round or something and I thought it's time to change things. Yeah. Um, trained really hard. And then the next season, I had 10 fights, won eight, lost two. I never looked back from there. And yeah. I actually decided that, you know, fitness and everything was going to get me a long way. Um, obviously, because I started so late, I didn't really have much of a youth, you know, a youth career. So I didn't pick up any Welsh titles or anything like that. Um, I managed to get to the seniors finals of the Welsh Championships. Sadly, I lost on a split decision. But um, for me, I've been learning everything on the road, and that's what I tell everyone. It doesn't matter about winning or losing in the amateurs, but it's about um, experience. You, you learn a lot of things going away. You know, I boxed in Estonia before. I lost against a Russian. I'd had 100 fights. I'd only had 30. But uh, everything's experience. You learn a lot on the road. Definitely. So what are your ambitions in this pro game now? I believe that you're fighting at 160. Is that where you're going to hang around at the middleweight division? Uh, no, no. I'm going to drop down to uh, super welterweight. So uh, is it 156? 154. Yeah, I'm going to drop down. Um, you know, I, I, I think I do okay in the middleweights, but I, I can make a day before weigh in definitely 156. And I'm strong at that weight as well. Yeah. Very tall. What are your ambitions in the programme? You, meant, you mentioned that you missed out on Welsh t- well, uh, the Welsh titles and stuff like that as an amateur, but what are your ambitions now you've turned pro? Well, uh, you know, everyone always asks me this question and my answer is always, you can go anywhere where you want. Do you know what I mean? Like, I, you can, I could say that I want to win a uh, British title, but then you could box for a British title, win that, and then you could go on to something else straight away. Do you know what I mean? So, sky's the limit at the end of the day. I, I'm, I'm ready for anything and... Uh, 
hopefully I can go all the way to a world, world title. You, who, who knows? Like I say, you set yourself them little goals. You said they're the British title. Set yourself that, that goal. Get that goal. Set yourself another goal. Just keep building and building and building. Yeah, that's it. You can have, you know, the Europeans. You can go to the IBF. You can get WBC international belts. You know what I mean? You can get, you can grab anything as long as you want it. Do you know what I mean? And I'm definitely hungry for belts. I was, the reason I was asking, because when I saw on Box right, that you, you were you're down as a middleweight, and I was going to get your opinion on a, your fellow Welshman, um, Liam Williams against Andrade yeah. and stuff like that. I mean, a good fight. Do you think Liam can do it? Yeah, 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 100%. Yeah, definitely. He's a different fighter since he's gone to the Ingalls gym, yeah. 100%. And I think he's definitely more confident now. I know people keep knocking him about the Liam Smith fights, but, I, you know, people learn. They learn from losses, do you know what I mean? He's definitely 1,000% definitely a different boxer now. He's more confident and he's definitely a lot, lot stronger. So I think he'll beat him. How do you, how do you see that? How do you, see, how do you think he'll beat him then? Do you think he it'll just be a different... I think I think he'll stop. I think he'll stop him. Yeah, yeah. I, I honestly think he, he will stop him. He, he'll go in there with a lot of confidence and he will stop him. Yeah. yeah well, I'm going to put a bet on then. If my bet doesn't come in, I'm coming back to you, Jerome, all right? Hey, that's it. I'm the bread maker. I'll be able to sort it out. I'm going to get you. You said they're going down to the 154-pound division, the super, super welterweight now. We've just seen Ted Cheeseman fight against JJ Metcalf. Anthony Fowler's down there. You've got Scott Fitzgerald. Liam Smith's there at elite level. We've got Kieran Smith versus Troy Williamson. Right now, the 154-pound division domestically, as I take to, uh, Sam Eggerton's there as well, I forgot Sam Eggerton, is a very, very, very stacked division. I mean, is that the reason why you're moving down there? Because, again, there's some big, big fights if you keep winning. Do you know what? Uh, I'm not bothered with a box. And I think the... The more experience of the opponent, the better. It brings out better of me. It's like when I'm sparring, if I'm sparring, you know, an amateur has not had many fights, they're unpredictable. Do you know what I mean? So if you spar these, if you're boxing these experienced boxers, uh, I thrive off it. Do you know what I mean? And definitely, yeah, I would probably say that um, dropping a weight down would be a, a good idea to get into some of them fights. That's what I mean. When you look at the 150, so I should have worded my question a wee bit better there, but when you look at that 154-pound division with the names that I mentioned, the Fowlers, the Fitzgeralds, the Cheesemans, the Eggentons, the Kieran Smiths, the Troy Williamsons and stuff like that, I mean, it is stacked. So all you need to do with Kieran as well, Kieran's a very, very good at his job. So I'm, I'm, I wouldn't be surprised, three, four, no, five wins down the line, those names, you could be knocking at the door. Are you licking, it, licking your lips at fighting these guys? Because again, they're big names, solid fighters, Tough division. You, there's no easy fights anymore as soon as you get to that level. I mean, you must be licking your lips. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. I've got styles. I've got a style to beat some of them boxes. Right? Like Ted Cheeseman, he, he just walks into shots, but I, I've got good foot movement. Do you know what I mean? I'm not Muhammad Ali with my feet. So, you know, Ted Cheeseman, I'd be able to keep him off my long reach all day long. Did you just say you like Muhammad Ali with your feet? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I do the Ali shuffle and everything. Yeah. <laughs> Well, oh, man, I like that. I can't wait. I can't wait to see you there, man. Like, I'll, I'll be honest, I haven't seen you box yet, but uh, I'm I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to see because I, I like I like the confidence that you you're oozing right now, man. You, you've got a lot of confidence and self belief in yourself, which is what you yeah. need. What? That's it as well. And obviously, I'm only six fights in. I've sparred. I've sparred some top people. Do you know what I mean? I've sparred Jack Cullen. I've sparred Macaulay McGowan. I've sparred Lee Selby. I've sparred Fred Evans. Do you know what I mean? I've sparred. I've sparred top top quality uh, operators, you know what I mean? And I know that that's where, I can, that's where I'm at, you know what I mean? Like, uh, sparring Jack Cullen, I was getting him ready for his fight with uh, John Doherty, you know what I mean? Yeah. He's like, uh, he was a lot heavier than me, but, you know, it was a good spar, very competitive, you know what I mean? So I know I can um, obviously match, you know, mix it up with these top um, people in my weight division. Definitely. Like I say, it's exciting times ahead. Hopefully boxing can get back, the crowds can get back and stuff like that. But for, but for you, have you got one final word you like to say to your like your fans or the British the, the the British boxing public that might not know who Jerome Warburton is, the bread maker, who might not know who you are? Have you got a message for these these uh, the people watching this interview right now? Yeah, I just want to say that obviously you know the bread makers in the camp and that's it. You know I train hard every day, all day. You know what I mean? And I'm ready to come and I'm ready to make my name well known. So I just like to say thank you to everyone. Definitely, mate. Well. Jerome, I won't keep you much longer, mate. I do appreciate your time. Uh, congratulations on signing with Kieran, Kieran Farrell. He's a top, top man. I've got a lot of time for Kieran. 
Um, and hopefully we can get you out. Well, I can see you out and get you out on a date soon so I can come and watch and, and stuff like that and get to see the bread maker in action. But again, yeah, yeah, that's it. Five TV, brother. Thank you. Cheers, thank you very much. Anytime. Cheers.